Hey you, do you want to win this Bear Walker Mew skateboard? What about this Blastoise bookend? Or this amazing Charmander fossil watch? How about some sitting cuties? Pokemon pins or an Earth charm? This beautiful pack of posters? Or even a Psyduck pool floaty? Then all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then leave a like and a comment on this video right here. This video. Come back on March 9th, that's Friday, March 9th, to see if you are the winner. Good luck. Hey, what is going on, fan clan? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Phantom. Happy Thursday. We are on Thursday. It is February 29th. Happy Leap Day. We haven't had a Leap Day in forever. It's been like four years. This is a bad joke. Bad joke. Let's start over. What is going on, fan clan? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Phantom. We spent a lot of time talking about Scarlet and Violet 151, Pokemon 151, and there's a couple different reasons behind it. Uh, number one, it is just the most interesting set uh, that is that Pokemon has released in quite some time. It is. It came out during a time where Pokemon was starting to fade a little bit. A lot of people were pushing themselves out of the hobby, and it still has seen great success, and the price points on a lot of singles have remained extremely consistent, unlike a lot of other counterparts throughout Sword and Shield, throughout Scarlet and Violet. Let's face it, Scarlet and Violet, very cheap for just about every single set uh, when it comes to not only sealed product, but singles as well. It's a great time to be a collector. But Scarlet and Violet 151 has just stayed the course, and it's been very, very interesting. Number two uh, is really because that's the set that people continue to be interested in, and we are we are struggling at a time right now where a lot of products right now when it comes to Scarlet and Violet 151 are becoming more and more difficult to find especially at price points that are below MSRP. A lot of people haven't been able to touch a booster bundle uh, since ever since they released because prices on them continue to be way above MSRP. We did have a, a, a nice period of time where a lot of the other ancillary products, a lot of the other products, even the Capstone products, like the Ultra Premium Collection and the Elite Trainer Box, were all selling uh, well below MSRP. And now we have gotten to the point where Elite Trainer Boxes have started to get a little bit higher than MSRP. Ultra Premium Collection still a little bit lower. That was by far... Uh, uh, the box, the piece that was produced the most by Pokemon, uh, still a little bit lower, but starting to creep closer and closer to that MSRP. And then the collection boxes, the poster collection, the binder collection, uh, those are starting to get a little bit closer to MSRP as well and becoming increasingly difficult to find, especially as more and more Pokemon products release, Pokemon card sets seemingly coming out every single week. And now here we are, a couple weeks away from the release of Temporal Forces, basically knocking on the door. And a lot of collectors, a lot of Pokemon card fans are wondering, okay, what is going on with Scarlet and Violet 150? Are we seeing any restocks? Are there going to be any reprints coming of that? And unfortunately, that information still has not been communicated. There are small restocks that continue to become available at distributors, uh, but nothing huge. Nothing that's really going to make an imprint or an impact on the, the financial market or on the market of Pokemon cards. So uh, every once in a while, uh, a couple of distributors might reach out to me and be like, hey, we got a small restock of Scarlet and Violet 151. Uh, there might be a few cases of Elite Trainer Boxes or a few cases of Ultra Premium Club. Collections, but basically it's just a drop in the bucket. Now, it is important to remember that distributors are completely different from what you might see at big box stores. So this is no way a true indicator of what stock looks like. I'm just talking to you about specifically what LGSs might get available, uh, what they might get offered to them. But when it, when it comes to like Best Buy, uh, when it comes to Walmart, when it comes to Target, they operate on a completely different scale, a completely different level. And it is more than possible that Pokemon, the Pokemon Company International, is feeding a lot of these products a lot of the elite trainer boxes directly to the marketing companies that supply and stock these big box stores. So that way they become more available. We've talked about this so many times in the past, even though products are getting short printed and becoming less and less available, like Pelde Evolved, like Paradox Rift, like what we're going to see from Temporal Forces where allocations are a little bit smaller than what they might have been for previous sets. That's not to say that they're not readily available because they continue to become offered at big box stores. And before the boom, uh, booster boxes were never available available at Target, uh, at Walmart, and you, you cannot necessarily go into the store and buy them, but uh, their online system oftentimes has a lot of these in stock, really close to MSRP, but sometimes they get discounted in places like that. You didn't have Target.com selling booster boxes before, so a lot of this product might be getting force-fed to, uh, to big box stores instead, so that way it stays in the hobby, and it doesn't, they don't, Pokemon doesn't necessarily have to worry about it being sold uh, two times, three times above MSRP or anything like that. So Scarlet and Violet 151, very interesting but with prices continuing to climb 
Uh, as far as Elite Trainer boxes go, and as far as some of the sealed packs go, and products like that, I really wanted to really wanted to find out, okay, is it still worth opening? Now, I know a lot of people are still chasing a handful of cards here and there to try and complete their Master Set, and Scarlet and Violet 151 is a little bit different than a lot of other sets because it's a lot of fun to open. Yeah, pull rates aren't necessarily ideal. They did get a little bit worse in Scarlet and Violet 151 than what we were used to with the prior set releases. However, it is still a ton of fun to open because you do have that nostalgia, you do have the amazing artworks and things like that, However, everything comes at a cost, and it's important to remember and extremely important to realize that you don't want to overspend. We talk about this all the time. We want to make sure that we set a budget to our collecting goals so that way we don't overspend because that's what's going to keep you in the hobby for the long haul. That's what's going to make you get the most enjoyment out of it. When you're overspending and burning yourself out, it doesn't become as much fun anymore. So it's okay to focus on value, but don't make it your sole, your sole reasoning as far as the hobby goes. So we've got our spreadsheet. We've got everything laid out. We've got prices laid out. We're going to take uh, take pull rates that we calculated based off of a couple of thousand Scarlet and Violet 151 packs. So that way we can determine when you open up your Elite, Elite Trainer box or when you open up a booster box worth of packs because there was no booster box for Scarlet and Violet 151. So a 36 pack sample size. What does it look like as far as value goes? How much are you should you expect to lose? Because you should always expect to lose money opening Pokemon cards. It's just going to happen. Very rarely are you going to hit that Moonbrion uh, out of your one pack of Evolving Skies and all of a sudden you're in... In profit city all over the place, uh, you're gonna lose money. So how much is it worth it to you? What does that fun cost look like, right? We talk about fun cost when it comes to Pokemon because uh, that's how much money you're spending to enjoy, how much money you're losing to enjoy the opening of cards. So I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna flip you guys around so you can see exactly what I am talking about. We've got everything laid out here, and it's very interesting looking at the price points on a lot of these. So I basically just took all the information from TCG Player, looked at how cheap everything was selling for, looked at the market price, and then basically rounded to the nearest dollar. So if it was $2.40, I rounded down to $2. If it was $2.60, I rounded up to $3. And basically, when it comes to your regular arts, for the most part, everything is bulk, except for a few different options. So we've got the Charizard EX in there. That one started creeping up a little bit. That one is selling for $5 currently as a regular art. The Blastoise also started creeping up a little bit. That was a bulk ultra rare before, or a bulk double rare before. It started creeping up a little bit. It's closer to $3 now. And then you've got the Mew EX, which is a little bit surprising because Mew EX continues to be readily available all over the place. And while the regular art necessarily didn't get reprinted in Paldean Fates, it did get a full art shiny version. It did get that special illustration rare, which is going to impact the price of basically all the Mews when it comes to competitive play because it does feature the same ability. Uh, so that card's still holding steady at about $5 currently. We'll see how that ha how that moves in the future. Uh, but that's it as far as, uh, as far as regular arts go, as far as double rares go. You've only got three that are basically selling a above uh, above that bulk pricing not right now. When we look at full arts, these ultra rares over here, and I promise I'll move my ugly mug out of the way so we can look at the bottom ones. These are where numbers get really interesting because if you look at ultra rares from basically every other set, not really from just Scarlet and Violet, but from Sword and Shield all the way on, Sword and Shield block all the way on, when you look at full arts, they do not perform well uh, because there has been so many that have been opened. There has been a mass, mass amount of packs that have been opened. There have been so so many full arts that have been pulled, uh, so th they have not performed well consistently throughout really any generation. However, when it comes to Scarlet and Violet 151, they're killing it. If you look at Venusaur EX, the full art ultra rare right here, that one is currently going for $17. The Charizard EX continues to climb. Uh, that one currently selling for $37. The Blastoise EX has ticked up a little bit. That's at $21. Even cards like the Arbok EX, which isn't necessarily the most popular Pokemon in the world, but still double digits on that one. That one's sitting at $10 currently. Uh, you've got the Ninetales EX that has grown quite a bit since release. Uh, that one's currently selling at $14. Don't focus just on the pull rates because the pull rates are a little bit skewed based off of sample size. One Ninetales EX, that means we opened one out of almost 1,700 packs was absolutely crazy. Uh, that was the last one that we needed to pull. Unlike Wigglytuff uh, where we pulled 12 of those, that one's only selling for $10 currently. The Alkazam EX this one's a little bit surprising. That one's ticked down a little bit, sitting at $14 currently. The Golem EX is at 9 The Kangaskhan uh, also at $9. Uh, You've got the, the Jinx. 
Uh, Jinx one is selling for $9. Zapdos EX is selling for $13. The Mew EX Full Art is at $21 currently. Bill's Transfer is at $5. Daisy's Help is at $6. The Erica's Invitation is at $14. And the Giovanni's Charisma is at $6. Those are the Full Arts. Those are just the Ultra Rares. Uh, we're going to look quickly at the Special Illustration Rares here before we move over into the Illustration Rare column. Charizard continues to stay steady. Very consistent on that one. Very consistent on a lot of these outside of a couple that have started falling a little bit more. Uh, the Alakazam EX, for example, has fallen down to $30. The Zapdos EX has dropped down a little bit. That one's currently selling at $37, but the Venusaur holding steady at $41. The Blastoise holding steady at $44. And the Charizard EX continues to stay very close to that $120 mark. It's sitting at $112 currently, so still not a sub $100 card, even though more and more Scarlet and Violet 151 continues to get open. Now, like I said, pull rate's a little bit worse for special illustration rares when it comes to this, but variance plays a factor, and there's only, what, seven special illustration rares in this set. So not as attractive of what we saw in Obsidian Flames as far as pull rates go, but not a whole lot that you can possibly pull. Plus, with no, no real capstone product as far as like a booster box goes, uh, your sample size is going to be a lot lower. But then you've got Giovanni's Charisma currently selling for $10, and you've got the Erica's Invitation currently selling for uh, $24. If we look at the illustration rares on the other side, again, Still holding very steady, and outside of some of the big ones, I started looking at the highest priced illustration rares in Scarlet and Violet. Very interesting data to look at, because a lot of them are like, you've got Paldea Evolved, so you've got uh, the Magikarp, you've got the Tyranitar, you've got the Raichu, those are selling pretty well, you've got a couple from Paradox Rift that are hanging on really well, like the Groudon, but outside of that, uh, there's not really a whole lot of strong performers when it comes to those illustration rares. It's all Scarlet and Violet 151, so just basically a giant list of Scarlet and Violet 151, because the illustration illustrationers are performing so well. Uh, the Bulbasaur currently selling for $23. The Ivysaur is at $18. The Charmander is at $31. The Charmeleon is at $21. Then you've got the, the Squirtle at $26 and the War Turtle at $19. Now those are obviously a little bit higher because they are the, the starter Pokemon for the nostalgic set, right? For the original set, the OGs, the base set. Uh, you've got Caterpie at $7. The Pikachu still staying strong at $21. The Needle King's at $8. You've got the Psyduck and the Poliwhirl at $10 a piece. The Machoke and the Tangela at $6 a piece. Poor Mr. Mime uh, has fallen. It's the only sub $5 card out of all the illustration rares. Currently selling for $4. Then you've got Ammonite at 6 and even Dragonair, which started out super low, saw a massive gain over the first couple of weeks, uh, has leveled off nicely. It's sitting at $17, so still very strong. The Hyper Rares, they do not perform well, pretty much in any set uh, that has ever been released. If you look at the Mew, that one's only selling for $9. The Switch is only at 5 and the Psychic Energy is at $4. So those gold cards, they just do not sell uh, extremely well. If we break all this down uh, and we calculate 1,692 booster packs that we opened up, uh, you're looking at three packs. It's going to take you three packs to get a hit, so just over three packs. Uh, your packs per double rare is 6.82. That means in a booster box, so if you open up 36 packs, now that would be four Elite Trainer box, 36 loose packs, it could be six, uh, six booster bundles. Uh, if you open up 36 packs, you can expect to get 5.28 double rares out of your 36 pack sample size. When you have an average value, so your average value of your double rares based off of pull rates is $2.58. Yes, you could pull something like the Charizard, which is worth $5, uh, or you could pull something uh, like the Golem, which is only worth $2, but on average, you're looking at $2.58 per card, per double rare. That means since you're uh, since you're expecting to pull 5.28 out of your booster box sample size, you should pull on average value $13.61 worth of value out of your booster box when it comes to just double rares, just when it comes to double rares for your 36 pack sample size. When it comes to your ultra rares, your full arts, you can expect 2.09 per uh, per 36 pack sample size. So per booster box sample size of Scarlet and Violet 151. A little bit more expensive when it comes to value for this one. You're looking at an average value per card of $13.44. Again, you could pull the Charizard for $37 or you could pull something uh, a lot cheaper like the Arbok or the Wigglytuff. On average, $13.44. That means on, on average, your booster box is gonna contain $28.02 worth of value when it comes to ultra rares. When it comes to illustration rares, a little bit higher. You're getting 2.72. So Almost three. We're used to three. Paldea Evolved, uh, Scarlet and Violet Base. Those had three illustration rares basically in every booster box, but you're only getting 2.72 in your sample size of 36 packs when it comes to 
uh, when it comes to Scarlet and Violet 151, your average value on those is $14.56. That means your average per booster box, you're looking at $39.65 worth of value. When it comes to special illustration rares, a little bit worse than what we're used to. So only 1.09 out of your 36 pack sample size. The average value much higher because it is going to be skewed a little bit by that Charizard. You could pull that special illustration rare Charizard or you could pull that special illustration rare Giovanni's Charisma. It's on average for a reason, $42.50 is your average value. Uh, that means on average your booster box should contain $46.19 worth of value when it comes to special illustration rares. And then your packs per hyper rare, uh, 0.74 per booster box. So a little bit worse uh, than what we are used to when it comes to all these other rares. Uh, however, only $6 for an average value when it comes to those hyper rares. So you're looking at $4.47 worth of value on average uh, for your, your booster box. Total, you're going to get 2.98 hits out of your elite trainer box. If we break this down and add all this together. So on average, you can expect to pull $131.95 worth of ultra rares out of your 36 pack sample size. Obviously it could be better than that. You could pull something like the Charizard. You could pull multiple special illustration rares. This is an average for a reason. And then your ancillary cards, like those hollow energies, uh, you have the grabber in there, which does okay. For the most part, uh, Scarlet and Violet 151, not a whole lot of competitive cards in the set. Very, very driven more towards collectors than competitive players. So you're looking at about $15 worth of value. However, the reverse hollows still hold a little bit of value, which helps out that ancillary value a little bit. So in total, your value for your booster box, you can expect to get about $146.95 worth of pulls out of your 36 pack sample size. So about $146. $47. However, the cost continues to rise. So the Scarlet and Violet 151 cost continues to go up. So if you buy a booster box worth of packs and you just buy them via loose packs, right now on TCG Player, the lowest listing right now, you're looking at $5.90 per booster pack uh, for Scarlet and Violet 151. You can look at the graph right here over the past three months. It's been very consistent, performed very well. It dropped down below $5.30 at one point in the middle of December. Uh, and now it's kind of risen since then. It's just been very very consistent, right? Very close to that $6 mark over the past couple of months now. Uh, so on average, your cost of booster box via PAX is $5.90. That means it's going to cost you about $212.40 to buy 36 packs of Scarlet and Violet 151. That means uh, since you're only pulling $146.95 worth of value, your fun cost is going to be $65.45. So you should expect to lose about $65 if you buy 36 loose packs of of Scarlet and Violet 151. That's if you're buying them for $212.40. I looked over eBay. Uh, very difficult to find a 36-pack lot uh, for $212.40. They, they seem to be a little bit more expensive than that, but that's what we're looking at. Cost of booster boxes via your ETBs, a little bit more expensive, unfortunately. If you look right now, $54.61 is the current going rate for Elite Trainer Boxes based off of the market pricing on TCG Player. You can find them a little bit cheaper on eBay or maybe at your local game store. Uh, you might be able to work out a deal to find them a little bit cheaper, but right now, uh, your cost is $54.61. Yeah, you get a little bit of extra stuff. You get the sleeves, you get the promo card, things like that, but your fun cost goes down, gets a little bit worse. It's going to cost you about $71.49 of fun to open up 36 packs via four elite trainer boxes. Your goal for a booster pack price right now to break even is $4.08. You're expected to pull about $4.08 worth of value out of every booster pack, whether it be ancillary, you might pull a little bit better. You're probably going to pull a little bit worse, but it's average for a reason. So your goal, if you can go out and you can find 36 packs for $4.08, now that's less than even a booster bundle. Uh, so it's very, very unlikely unless we find a massive reprint or a restock comes and I, I will keep you guys apprised of that information as soon as it comes available to me. I still believe we are going to get more product, but as of right now, uh, it looks like you are going to be losing a fair amount on average when it comes to opening up your Scarlet and Violet 151 uh, product. So that's why it's important for you to realize the prices so that way you know, okay, well, I love opening 151, but is it worth it to me or should I focus on Temporal Forces? Should I maybe open a little bit of Paldean Fates now that that's getting cheaper or should I just save my money, buy singles and move on? Uh, now that you have the information, you can make the best decision uh, for your collecting budget. So I hope you enjoy the content. If you do, please hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. It goes a really long way for the algorithm but most importantly thank you just so much for being here love you guys i appreciate you so much uh, i'll be back tomorrow with another video until next time peace